All right, so I've had an idea stuck somewhere in the recesses of my brain for like a year and a half, two years. I really don't keep track of brain ideas very well. But uh, I had an idea for an instrument and I just gotta do it. So if you're interested in buying this, cool. I'd love to sell it to you. If you don't want it and I want it, awesome. I'm excited to own it. But here's what I've had stuck in my brain and been proposing for a while. I'd like to make a banjo out of a tea kettle. Uh, I've seen these things at antique malls and all around, um, and I see them silver, they're like chrome plated copper. I've seen a couple really nice ones. This one's in the middle, and, uh, and so I think what I'm actually going to do is take the dents out and restore it, polish it up really nice. Um, but the reason I saw this, and I don't know why my brain works this way, but it did, um, this instantly looks like a banjo to me, and I'll show you how. This is going to be where you play it, like the body, right? And then the spout right here is actually going to be the tailpiece. Um, the strings will come down, and so the strings will come out of the spout across this, right? And I can actually make it louder, take the lid off, right? And so the neck will come out of here. Uh, and it comes with a handy handle. So uh, step one is uh, cleaning it. So I gotta get all the water scale and everything else out of it, take some of these big dents out that are in there, and I'm gonna try and polish it up and see what it looks like, because I think it'll be really pretty uh, done all up. Now, some people say I should leave dents, but uh, yeah, you can make your own banjo. So let's uh, get started. All right, so here's the condition we got it in. Uh, this knob doesn't match. We'll make sure we make that work. Uh, this is actually in decent shape in terms of its physical shape. It's got a couple of dents in here. Um, but the main problem is, if you guys can see, I have dents in here that I need to get out. Um, let's get a closer look here. All right, so you guys can see in the light here. I got, there you go. I want to get rid of some of these things. And I don't think it'll take much. So I'm going to try and knock them out. Um, I got some all on the rims here, you can see that. So we'll try and get these little fellows out. Um, and if not, I try. So what I'm going to use is actually... Uh, I'm going to polish this little face, but I have a set for body restoration and if I hit here It's not going to work out. So I got to go inside and, and knock it out. So let's uh, knock out these dents All right, so I'm learning here that it's actually thin enough, I can move it with my hands. So I don't really need to hammer on anything. A lot of these dents come out just from me pushing on them. Um, that makes my life a lot easier, I think. So, now I might need a little round piece of wood or something in there to actually polish them out. Let's see what I got. All right, so I got a ton of the dents out, the little ones. I can't get everything out, and I'm tearing up my fingers on the calcium deposits in there, so I gotta get out that, that out first, I think. Um, I made a quick little piece of wood that's shaped to the same circumference as the uh, bottom here to kind of force some of these dents out. Um, and like I said, there's some micro little things there, but man, I just it's tearing me up. So I'm gonna actually get all the scale out and then try and finish off those little dents. Um, and then we'll polish it up. So you can see inside, it's pretty gnarly. Um, you can hear it. And as I'm scraping it and stuff, this is the scale that's kind of coming out. Um, so let's get that cleaned out. So I'm just using some Brasso, give it a once over. I have a feeling I'm gonna have to take out some more dents here and there, but we'll see. Um, once I got it clean, it's a little dentier than I thought. So let's do this. All right, first time on the Brasso, you can see all the dents in there. Uh, we'll see what we can do about some of that. It also looks like it's been chrome plated and then copper plated or something, man. You can see it kind of coming through. So I'm gonna do the rest of this. We'll see how polished up we can get it. 
Okay, so I got my lights turned off so you guys can see this. Um, I tried to polish the top, the little lid here. I don't know if you guys can see that. I think they actually had this lacquered or coated um, because I got down to bare copper here and you can see the tarnished yellowish stuff that comes off. I think that's a sealant because um, <clears throat> I think that's what was cracking through on some of these areas uh, is coming off that lacquer. So I have a choice if I want to polish this completely back to raw copper and reseal it or leave it. <clears throat> Thinking I might just leave it. So we'll see. Um, but I got to finish this so it looks uniform. So a little more polishing. All right. So I think this is too luxurious to pass up. So I'm going to actually polish the whole thing and uh, lacquer seal it. So uh, I have work to do. So I'm going to steal wool off whatever sealant they have on the outside of this and uh, get it back to raw copper and start from scratch. All right, so I've gotten the copper exposed on the top. More to do. But while I'm doing that, I'm gonna have something glued up here. Uh, I have one of my templates set out for my neck. I'm trying to figure out what kind of woods I want to use for this, and I think I've got it figured out. I think I'm gonna use one of my favorites, which is the Ambrosia Maple. Um, but I'm gonna do a Coca Bolo fingerboard. So we need to glue that up. But I also realized I'm gonna try a carving for the headstock that I think will be pretty cool. So, um, yeah, first of a few glue ups. So let's uh, cut some wood stuff for the neck. All right, so I made more work for myself than I needed to, and um, that's normally the case. Anyways, uh, I took that finish off. I sanded off with steel wool. I got off all of that other finish that Revere, or whoever, yeah, Revere had put on this tea kettle, and uh, I should have left it on there. Uh, it, it actually did not what I wanted it to. It kind of highlighted a lot more of these dents and dings that I was trying to get rid of. Uh, I thought I got rid of most of them, but they were kind of hidden in the matte finish. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to high polish this up, try and get every dent out that I can, and then um, and then we'll uh, put a sealant on it. So yeah, so that's where that stands. So I need to do some polishing on this. All right, so tea kettle is drying. I got a coat of lacquer on it. I got the knob and the handle, and I'm just gonna put some India ink on these and stain them black, uh, and then clear coat those as well. So, this shouldn't take long. We'll knock these little fellas out. All right, polishing done. I've got most of the rouge off. Uh, last thing is I'm just gonna degrease it, a little bit of acetone, and then I'm going to uh, actually put a coat of lacquer on it. So, clean this off, spray it down. 